wow. What a, mm, what a show. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. As you can tell by, ah, oh, my nice. Hi, I like it. That's right, Gunnery Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. I'm here to talk about AEW. And as you can tell by the title, it was a tag team appreciation night that mainly had singles matches. I was kind of disappointed. And there's a little update about next week. So let's get the show on the road. And as always, I have two people to thank. Cover roll. Yes, sir. You were that luchador on a forklift. And Mr. Saxy, you, sir, you win twice, just like Joey Ryan did that once against Evil Elise, because you got that six count.
So let's talk about some tag team wrestling with very little tag team wrestling. Um, actually, the show started off with great promise. Started off with the Young Bucks taking on the Dark Order. This was good. The Dark Order jumps the Young Bucks once they get out. And I like the fact that the Young Bucks are distinguishing themselves. I'll get into that. Um, Matt Jackson, like, gets beat up. He's left on the stage. And Nick Nick just gets, gets whooped on. Um, eventually, Matt jumps. He did a dive off the stage. And... I don't know if this was like a thrown together thing, but he just like missed all three of the Dark Order people. And then the Dark Order sold it. Like literally Matt Jackson did like a somersault flick. So, so, so here are Dark Order people. Here is Matt Jackson. Matt Jackson, and whoop, somersault like right over in the like, uh-oh, whoop. And they like had to fall down. One I have to put, I have to get like graphics. So I have to get like, stick figure people to illustrate things but that's something for another day but yeah that there were some spots that you're like eh. again i like the young bucks when they were in pro wrestling gorilla when they told interesting stories i got the crowd into it now i want to wonder if the lack of a crowd really is hurting wrestling. Because I'll tell you what, the Young Bucks, they need that crowd, I think. I think they're that one. That's why, to me, they're not the best tag team in the world. Or they're not the best tag team ever. They need to feed off that crowd energy. If there is no crowd there... And this sounds terrible, but it just feels like they're going through rehearsed moves. There's no spontaneity. There's... What's the word? It just seems they're, they're walking through it. Trust me, I can never walk through the stuff they do. But it just seems they're, they're walking through it. Maybe I should send that email to Jim Cornette. Interesting. Good thought, maybe. Indeed. Hobo Tom gets on the Jim Cornette show. That would be interesting. Um, let's see here. What else is there? Yeah, he missed him. That was weird. The Dark Order. Again, like, they posed and they teased a backdrop on the knee. And it's it's weird. Oh, and because of Matt, thank you, Matt Jackson. I can now tell which young buck is which. Matt Jackson, Road Warrior Buck, is the one with a beard. So I can tell that. So Matt Jackson, you cannot shave. Nick Jackson is balding buck. Thank you, Jim Cornette. So I'm like, wait a second. For some reason, no wonder. Yeah, that's I, I don't care. I just say take it all down. This is what the Bucks do. They should have a hair versus career match versus hair versus hair versus FTR. And Young Bucks lose. <laughs> or they could go they could go all all luchador and go hair versus masks with 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 the, the dark order. Indeed. Uh let's see her now. Uh, Matt Matt Jackson, the one with the beard, eventually gets a hot tag, uh, crossbody, <laughs> and then Road Warrior Buck Nick again starts doing Mexican arm drags to everyone. Uh, he got caught, and oh, I'll tell you what that Nick Jackson got caught in a catch German suplex. Evil Uno. That Cash German suplex looked absolutely amazing. Um, great teamwork by both the Young Bucks and the Dark Order. They know what they're doing. Uh, Matt did something. Um, Nick, the balding buck, did a 
he had his comeback. Yeah, so Matt Jackson is is Bearded Buck, who is Road Warrior Buck. Yeah, Road Warrior Buck. And then Nick Jackson is Balding Buck. There we go. Let's see here, the Young Bucks did hit Risky Business, which is always cool to see. I, I do enjoy the tag team wrestling when they do the flying flippy tandem stuff. It just seems so rehearsed, though, I think. And and maybe it's that crowd. Who knows? Then, oh, that was a brain buster kick by the Dark Order. That was actually pretty good. Um, that was a cheap roll-up from the Fatality. Yeah, it was a good enough match. I mean, I'm not going to knock them. Those two spots were pretty bad. But again, they can they do all the tag team work. They, they make it look smooth but rehearsed. It's not bad. I'm not going to go Jim Cornette and say I'm offended by it. I just think it gets kind of repetitive. Seeing the Bucks in Ring of Honor only every so often. Seeing them in New Japan every so often. Wasn't bad. It was actually probably pretty good because it made it seem that much more special. And I'll have to phrase that question somehow. But yeah, for the most part, this was a eh, cheeseburger match. Then we start getting into some interviews. Um, MJF does his MJF thing. Make wrestling great again. They interview Paige and Omega, who's the best tag team. They say, Young Bucks, oh, no, wait, it should be us. We're the champions. Yeah, that's probably as far as tag team, as, as far as tag team appreciation that goes. Because then um, MJF did his little speech called out Moxley. Moxley came in. This time through the front to the regular entrance. Because once Moxley's music hit, uh, MJF sent his goons out into the audience to, to stop him at various choke points. No, this time Moxley came out of the regular place to surprise MJF. It was okay. It is what it was. MJF is a good heel. Talks good. The whole presidential stuff. Uh, then we have Cody Rose taking on Scorpio Sky. This is actually pretty fun and actually fairly short. Um, Brandy looks amazing. The Bunny Alley looks hot. Cody Rhodes has this whole entourage with him and just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. I want to see when QT Marshall splits up with them, but probably over the antics, I hope, between Alley and Brandy. But you never know with, with what's going on. Let's see here. Um, so in this match, the traded headlocks. Very traditional wrestling match. I'll give them this much. And there are shades of very classic stuff. Scorpion Sky, obviously the bigger high flyer. Uh, more willing to take risks. W willing to take risks to win that belt. Um, and they started to run the ropes. A shoulder tackle. The amazing running of ropes. The the, te the Technique involved was really good. Uh, there was a big hip toss. Cody Rhodes delivered to Scorpio Sky that sent Scorpio Sky to the outside. And that was fun. Uh, eventually, Scorpio Sky gets back in. Arn Anderson just backs away. He's like, hey, listen, I'm not going to fight you, so, so don't worry about me. Because Scorpio Sky kind of looked at him. Again, it's weird having that whole entourage there. Um, when they go back in the ring, um, Cody Rhodes clotheslines Scorpio Sky. They both go over the top rope. A little bit more brawling. Uh, Scorpio Sky then smartens up. He goes after the bad ribs of Cody Rhodes. And Taz is smart. Taz, thank you. Thank you, Taz. Wearing a weight belt is absolutely nothing if you have bruised ribs. You mentioned the intercostals. Probably the most painful thing to, to bruise or tweak is an intercostal because every breath you take, it literally hurts. I did it once. I tweaked something. I tweaked my intercostals along my ribs. Oh my god! It it hurt to hurt hurt to twist. It hurt. I'll tell you what. I never thought a cough was so painful. 
And it's not just coughing. And I think this was like allergy season too. Because this was like years ago before COVID virus. So I have no COVID. I just want to state that. But I'll tell you what. I tweak something. It hurts to cough. It hurts to sneeze. It hurts to twist the wrong way. It hurts to lay on. For a good solid two days, I'm just like, God, get me through today, please. Well, that and um, some old crow with Coca-Cola. Or was it Sprite? Ah, something like that. You get the meaning. Um, again, Sky, he, he, he takes he takes the risk. There was a big superplex, which Sky uh, uh, turned into a cradle when they fell down. The TKO, or he was going for the TKO. Cody reversed that into a crossroads, but it was a kick out too sweet. So it was good to see. It makes Scorpio Sky look strong. And in this case, I can understand why someone would, why a wrestler of the caliber of a Scorpio Sky would actually kick out of, of one crossroads. It's not like it's, it's Pineapple Pete or... Um, uh, whatever other jobber they've, they've, they've tossed to Cody. Where, oh yeah, he wants to make Pineapple Pete look strong. He's Pineapple Pete kicks out of a crossroads. No. Pineapple Pete should never kick out of a crossroads. Scorpio Sky, though, a little bit different case. Um, then there was the... Then Scorpio Sky missed a slingshot cutter. And this, got, and this landed him into a second crossroads. This time he did not kick out. Getting a good match for both. Cody Road wins. Again, he's not dropping that title anytime soon. Unless unless Matt Cardona. Unless Matt Cardona turns on him. Maybe Matt Cardona is the one that breaks up the Nightmare family. Who knows? But again, this was a good solid cheeseburger match. Well, it could be Brody Lee, because Brody Lee came out and kind of promised, like, I'm going to fight you for the belt on the 22nd. I'm like, wait a second. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 9, wait. 12. And then I looked at my calendar, stared at my calendar, I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. I'm like, something's wrong. And, and, and I'll address that very shortly. Or actually, you know, you want know um yeah um I'll dress it right after this private party. This is their favorite tag team is the Hardys. They're not old enough to remember the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, so I'll, I'll give them that pass. But next next week, there is no <laughs> AEW on Wednesday, so I don't know what I'm doing Wednesday. I was going to do a food review. I might do a review of the races though. So there might be a little bonus video on Wednesday. Either that. Or, I don't know, I, I'm, I might have a guest talk about NXT. I have no idea, though. So, yeah, they got preempted because of basketball. I knew something screwy was going to happen. And I wonder if this is the writing on the wall because the one executive from TNT got fired. And it only takes one, the wrong executive, to say, you know what? Well, we don't need wrestling. Basketball pays us piles of money more. Or we get piles more money from basketball coverage. And then with football and baseball season. Uh, AEW got, I think I kind of lucky. In the fact that the only thing TNT has been able to show on Wednesdays was for a long time. AEW. They had a monopoly on it besides movies. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future with basketball. And that'll be a two-part question for Mr. Jim Cornette. Um, the next match, it was Paige and Omega taking on Jurassic Express. <laughs> this was funny because this, this actually showed heel Kenny, which is so much more entertaining. Uh, Kenny came out. Marco Stunt jumped on the top. He starts to talk smack. Kenny Omega doesn't talk smack. He smacks talkers. He slapped little Marco Stunt across the face. 
I think even Taz mentioned, you know what? I think even Jim Cornette's going to like that. And Taz is so good. Taz is... They don't need Excalibur anymore. I don't even care what Excalibur said, because I think Excalibur used the N-word, but it was part of a wrestling promo that he was told to use, and, and the other people okayed it, so... I don't mind that. I don't think... I think he was getting very moralish. Like, mama mia! You don't... It's okay to know what moves aren't. You don't have to call everything a tope suicido! Or tope... Whatever he calls them. Um, that is... Was getting somewhat oldish. Taz makes it seem more legitimate along I think Taz and Jim Ross they they play well off each other and Tony Schiavone he tosses up that softball every so often I think they have something good with Taz and JR and Tony Schiavone as a three man crew uh, Excalibur was there we'll see what happens uh, let's see here so yeah I can't even make a slap mark here when he was going full heel uh, Jungle Boy. I did a, I'll tell you what, he did a Fireman's Carry, which I love. Which is the only reason this is getting a cheeseburger. But then he did like the the, the, the ro rope uh, rope running trip. Like Kenny Omega didn't like jump over him and he like fell on his face. That was a really awkward sequence right around that Fireman's Carry. The Fireman's Carry takedown looked great. I mean, I'll give you props when when you do very good stuff. I'll also say some of it looks like absolute garbage. Now, Omega, again, he just seemed like he was getting out-wrestled. It seemed like Kenny Omega couldn't keep up with Jungle Boy. He seemed to be that awkward half-step behind. I don't know if that explains it any better, but it is what it is. Um... So here, what else was this match? Yeah, Jungle Boy did the Senton off of Luchasaurus. That actually looked pretty cool. He jumped on, I don't know if he meant to do it, but the shins and then just kind of rolled off him. That kind of looked like a planned spot, but that was good. Uh, Luchasaurus. Again, he just no sells the chops, delivers his own chops and kicks. Luchasaurus was fun in Lucha Underground, but I think it was because it was Lucha Underground. And Lucha Underground always had that campy, cheesy feel to it. Whereas when you try to do that in like what's supposed to be sports space like AEW, it doesn't necessarily quite translate as well. He's still entertaining. He's still, I think, I think he he's good. I mean, I'm not gonna say you're you're bad unless you're really unless you're you're Boo Sonya Deville bad. That was just a god awful match, though. Lacey, uh, I don't know. She's, I don't know. He's definitely not Lacey Evans bad. It might be just his body type, just kind of awkward looking. Who knows? He's he still those things that I that I couldn't do anyway, so I I really shouldn't speak ill of him, but that's okay. Then let's see. So. Yeah, uh, Omega makes a comeback. There's a double X handle. Paige gets in. Paige, for his body type, looks like a pro wrestler. Jim Cornette uses this. He he looks like a full grown adult man, adult male. But yet, he has that quickness to him still. He has that little pop of speed, but he has the musculature to deliver it with some oomph, if that makes any sense. So Paige just looks good in the ring. And, and he he's... When I saw him in New Japan, he looked... Eh, okay. Now he looks really good. They're letting him shine. He, of all people, should be champion one day in soon, I hope. And not tag team champions either. Jungle Boy chops both Page and Omega for a while. Luchasaurus, he kicks both. 
does that kind of tail whip kick, Kenny Omega, he, he just starts delivering Snapdragon suplexes to everyone. That was amazing. Uh, he, he Two Snapdragons to Luchasaurus, a Snapdragon for, for Jungle Boy, and then he Snapdragon Marco stunt, and Taz was loving it. Taz was like, yes, yes, yes. Taz, again, the human suplex machine, Taz. Then... Kenny okay, Omega hit the Fisherman Buster, too. I haven't seen that move in a while. However, it turned because Paige and Omega tried to do the double-team suplex on Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus soon turned into a one-on-two suplex. A Jungle Boy comes in. And, and then Marco Stone's being used as a weapon. And Jungle Boy was distracting the referee. Wait, wait, wait. They're not heels. Boo! Boo using Marco Stone as a weapon. Let's see here. Again, there was some Jurassic Express again with the double teams. Oh, that was really good. Uh, they double team Paige. Paige was going to eat the pin except for Kenny Omega saves it. He breaks it right before the three count. Jungle Boy got tossed to the outside. Omega did his dive. They had a last call onto Jungle Boy when he got back in. Kenny Omega pinned him. Paige smartly. Held Luciosaurus on the outside. Page and Omega won. They're not going to drop the titles to, to these two. It was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we get a segment between the Rock and Roll Express and the Young Bucks. And Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard of the Four Horsemen and FTR. It was okay. It is what it was. Uh, FTR, uh, the revival is still the revival is still so good. I like. That. I'm beginning to like them more than the Bucks. The Bucks just, I don't know. It's a cheese factory. I wonder if Jim Cornette's like turning over right now, like losing sleep at the Rock and Roll Express, or doing promos with the Young Bucks. Oh well. Uh, Chris Jericho had his promo, and for some reason, that orange jacket hasn't been washed and is getting oranger. I don't think that was possible. But uh, then our next match, before I take my little break, we had Hikaru Shida versus Heather Monroe. Wow! You know what? AEW is becoming very formulaic also with their women's division because all of the jobbers are wearing, like, Latex bodysuits. It's like they're one. They're, it's like they're one they share or something, or or is that, or they go to that store up in Jacksonville. You know what store I'm talking about. Uh, this was pretty quick. Heather Heather Monroe. I'll give her credit. She actually jumped Sheeta. She tried to make a fight out of it, which is good. She she tried. I like that. She made the honest fourth while attempt to try to win. Uh, Sheeta, however, was going to have none of that. Uh, it was this, the, the, the one knee, the mountain strikes. Uh, Sheeta then hit hit the buckle plex, and Sheeta won, um, not by pinfall, but by stretch muffler. Whoa, that was unforeseen. That was not foreseen. So we had Jake Roberts and Lance Archer. Jake's trying to cut a promo. Lance Archer like sees people like milling about in the in the dressing room and just throws people around. And then Jake Roberts is, is looking worried though for some reason. What could possibly worry Jake Roberts? Oh, I know what could worry Jake Roberts. Lance Archer starts to physically disrobe Jake the Snake Roberts and painted on Jake's back is like murder everyone. Whoa. That's kind of dark there. I kind of like it though. Mainly because it goes along with Archer. Maybe Jake Roberts says, you know what? I've had my fun. Thank you for letting me do this again. I want to get out of here though. 
hey, it's a quick, easy out if Archer turns on Jake Roberts, though. Or if Archer feels that Jake is holding him back. I can see that happening. That could actually be pretty fun. Uh, then we have Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy recap. This leads to the match. Orange Cassidy takes it to Jericho on the outside. Chris Jericho makes his comeback. Uh, on the they, they go to the outside again. Orange Cassidy gets dropped on the bicycle rack. That's that's what it is. I'm not even going to call it a barricade anymore because it's, it's the one that cheap metal bicycle racks. Yeah, that'll be interesting at work on Sunday. How, how we space out people. I don't know. I just want to get my checker flag face covering. That would be so cool. I don't necessarily like the fact that we had like online training. I wanted to get in my park because I have like no clue where to park though. I'm going to be actually, I should drive by there. Shoot. Yeah, I'll also drive by there like. Drive around there like Saturday night. See what's going on. So we'll see what happens. But yeah. Bicycle racks they use. Uh, Chris Jericho. Then we come back. We go to the break. It's a little more action during the picture in picture. Chris Jericho is doing the squatting delayed suplex. Uh, that's great. And it's so good to see Chris Jericho do the line salt. Um. Of course, Orange Cassidy, not to be outdone, that hits Chris Jericho with a super kick across the body. Uh, Chris Jericho wanted to kick him, and then twice, he got caught in a dragon screw leg whip, which is not good. The one time, however, Orange Cassidy wanted to kick Chris Jericho. He got caught in the Boston Crab. Say it for what it is, the Boston Crab. The, the walls of Jericho are different. You're, like, you're literally like, having, having the guy sit on his head. The Boston Crab's a lot more on the lower back. Uh, again, that was like the, like the slowest small package ever then tried. Again, this match was really weird. Uh, there was an ankle lock by Orange Cassidy. Chris Jericho hit a code breaker, gets out of that. Um, then there was the, the Michinoku driver that Orange Cassidy hit and the shiniest wizard. But Chris Jericho kicks out of that. There was a little distraction. Um, the best friends, Hernandez, Ortiz, started a brawl up the front. Remember, they were banned from ringside. Jake Hager, Hager sneak, sneaks in behind the referee. Does just a basic running power slam to Orange Cassidy. Chris Jericho tries to capitalize. No, that didn't work. Then Chris Jericho tried to pull a Yano. Orange Cassidy was right behind him. Chris Jericho was grabbed the ref, tongue of the ref, and Yano'd. Orange Cassidy and boo Orange Cassidy. No one kicks out of a Yano. Well, the Yano is like the reverse kick to the nuts. So the referee can't see you kick the person in, in the groin. Boo Orange Cassidy and boo Chris Jericho. Why is everyone from AEW stealing moves in New Japan and not doing them right? Boo. Boo. And Orange Cassidy like hit like the mouse trap. <coughs> Which Taz knew, but Taz has a lot more wrestling experience though. So. Cause Jared had no clue what it was. Tony Schiavone's like, is that the mouse trap? It's like Taz is like, holy shit, I haven't seen the mouse trap. He used it like 20 years. All my wrestling experience. It's like uh, uh, the mouse trap. It's literally like a lazy combination of a side Russian leg sweep and La Mahistra. In fact, La Mahistra looks better than the mousetrap. Like, literally, with the mousetrap, you just, like, you lock the person's head. Like, you think of the side Russian leg sweep, you inter intertwine the leg, you lock their head, and just, like, kind of fall back and just stay there. And, like, that's it. Like, it's one of probably the laziest cheap pins ever. But Orange Cassidy won by it. Can't fault Orange Cassidy for that. <sighs> I don't know. This was a ham sandwich of a match, though.
And I don't know who has more dad bod. Mike Kyoto, who was formerly of WWE fame, and or Chris Jericho. One of those two guys has is, is going to out dad bod the other. And that was it. Um, weird show. Something that was supposed to highlight tag team wrestling with only two tag team wrestling matches. I could understand. They didn't need. They really didn't need that. They didn't need the. Even with the women, they could have had a tag team match. Yeah. I don't know. Chris Jericho said it was going to be this. And I'm like, huh? Why is it? He could have done this. They could have held, held this off until the pay per view. But then again, Chris Jericho is off doing coronavirus concert in South Dakota, Sturgis. So who knows? Cody didn't doesn't have to defend his belt all the time because it's a special event. If he came out, it would have been I think you a promise like, no, I'm not going to defend my belt. This is going to be the one reprieve. You know what, you guys, Scorpio Sky, you and I, you and I will have a match for the pay per view. Instead, I don't know. To me, AEW is just falling a little bit flat. Impact, I think, is the one on the rise. I like to hear what you guys have to say. As far as the rest of the week, tomorrow I am off, but this video will probably get posted tomorrow morning. Friday is Friday Night SmackDown. Saturday I'm off. Sunday I'm off. The next week, Monday, is going to be Raw. Tuesday, my normal impact. On Wednesday, it might be a double video. I might do a little highlight of the races. Might do a little... NXT, I don't know. NXT is coming on. I forget. I think NXT is like nine to eleven. I think Thursday's SummerSlam predictions. Saturday, I'm, I'm off because well, I can't do that because I'm working at from six o'clock. And then Sunday, SummerSlam. That's it, folks. I don't know what else to say. I like to thank you guys for.